Hello music and video producers and mastering engineers. I am Friedemann Tischmeier and if you want to get to know how to perfectly manage leveling of your songs or audio for YouTube and any online distribution platform, stay tuned. Down the road you will get a better understanding of terms like LUFS, LU Integrated and Short Term Loudness. First we need to understand loudness normalization. You may have heard that Spotify, YouTube Tidal, Pandora iTunes and many other platforms apply this loudness normalization to your audio so that it is important to understand what these platforms actually do with your audio after you have uploaded or delivered your final master. Loudness normalization is the opposite of peak normalization which has led to the loudness wars. With peak normalization every song was leveled according to the loudest peaks used in a particular track. You can think of it like everything hits more or less the ceiling of the digital scale, which is 0 dB full scale. This is the reason why more dynamic or spiky tracks sound not as loud as strongly limited or peak truncated masters, which was the reason why mastering engineers have pushed the limiting beyond good taste because everybody wanted to be as loud as possible. This is very disadvantageous for music listeners because the perceived loudness would jump drastically if you listen to a playlist with, let's say, Metallica's Death Magnetic and a more dynamic acoustic pop song. With loudness normalization all songs are judged based on the average density, called loudness in the terminology of audio engineers. We know different approaches to measure loudness, which is for example the outdated good old RMS average or program loudness, which is also called integrated loudness or just LUI. There are several other proprietary metrics used by different platforms, but integrated loudness or LUI is the world standard for loudness measurement and you're fine when you just get familiar with LUI. I don't want to become too technical here and when you want to learn more you can google for ITU BS1770 revision 4 which is the international standard which defines LUI. Just as a quick summary it is a loudness measurement method which works with a frequency weighting called K weighting which applies a low cut and a high shelf just in the measurement signal path and applies channel summing so that you just have to deal with one loudness value independent of the number of audio tracks. It works with two staggered gates with a purpose to ignore the lower portions of the loudness spectrum with a purpose to allow a fair loudness normalization for songs with different macrodynamics. This sounds complicated but is actually logical and important to grasp so that you have the ability to use and interpret loudness metering properly. To understand this I'll give you an easy example. We have two songs which should match loudness after loudness normalization. Song 1 has almost no macrodynamics which means it rocks all the way through. You can imagine a flat sausage if you think of the wave image. This song 1 would measure minus 6 LUFS if we average the loudness of the whole song without a gate applied. In this case the gate would have no big effect on the result because of the absence of lower loudness portions. However, song 2 has a lot of macrodynamics like a fluffy intro, very dynamic verses and a chorus which is also at minus 6 LUFS loudness. As we measure the average of the whole song without a gate, we would possibly read minus 16 LUFS. We would now deliver both songs to an online platform like iTunes, which is loudness normalized to minus 16 LUFS. Song 1 would be reduced by 10 dB, while song 2 would not be touched at all, in this theoretical case with no gating applied. The result is that the chorus of song 2 would be 10 dB louder than song 1. This is definitely not what a good loudness normalization should do. For this reason we need to gate to get rid of the lower loudness events of the song 2, which would lead possibly to a measurement result of minus 9 LUFS. With gate on, the song 2 would now also be reduced by 7 dB to match minus 16 LUFS loudness normalization, which means that the chorus of song 2 is just 3 dB louder than song 1 overall, which is considered as acceptable. 
This is important to understand as it helps you to interpret what a good loudness meter tells you. I'll come back to it in a moment with more precise examples. To summarize, loudness normalization is always based on an integrated loudness metric, meaning by measuring a complete song or program and most platforms just apply level reduction and no level increases if your song or audio is lower than the platform's specific target loudness. Usually there is no processing like limiting involved. Some platforms even don't change the level of the audio itself, they just mark the audio with the loudness information, respectively the level offset to be applied so that the player would automatically play the song with an internal level correction. In case of iTunes you find that information here if you go to properties and on YouTube you go to the statistics for geeks. Here it is. Let's now look into using a metering tool and figure out which of the new LU metrics are useful for what and how you interpret it to make the right decisions when you deliver for online platforms. Let's assume we level a song for YouTube, which uses roughly minus 12 LUFS target loudness, which means that YouTube measures the integrated loudness over the whole song or video, and if the loudness is higher than minus 12 LUFS, the offset to minus 12 LUFS will be reduced. When your level is lower, which is usually not the case unless you produce acoustic music or jazz, your audio won't be touched. I'd like to quickly show you where you can read the integrated loudness on the dynamic range meter mark 2. Here somewhere in the center bar graph you find this little horizontal line which either shows DR integrated, which stands for dynamic range integrated or LUI, which stands for loudness units integrated. You simply toggle by just clicking into the bar or value. No worries, you won't lose the value through toggling unless you reset the plugin or stop and restart measurement. When I start the playback it takes a moment because it makes no sense to measure segments which are shorter than 10 seconds. Let's start and watch. It's very important to understand that the real or official integrated value will just come out if you either measure the whole song from top to end with a tool like this, or you use a quick offline metering utility. Mart will soon release an upgraded DR Offline Mark II metering utility tool. But have in mind that the master needs to be rendered first before you can measure the integrated loudness of your final master with an offline tool. To gain clarity, in the world of metering we use several different terms to speak about the same stuff. So once again, integrated loudness is the same as program loudness or LUFSI. Everything with loudness and I is usually integrated loudness. It's all the same and this is the only relevant value for loudness normalization. Ergo, your final judgment in terms of how good you meet your set target loudness. Our aim today is to meet minus 12 LUFS target loudness, as this track will be just distributed via online streaming, so no need to take care about the good old fading loudness war and the question if it's loud enough for the specific genre, as nobody will be louder on YouTube due to the applied loudness normalization. I now need to explain two other terms for the sake of clarification. We have just used the term target loudness quite a few times. This is what you set here by moving the yellowish line up and down. We quickly complement the basic setup by defining our true peak threshold, which is done with this handle here. Minus 0.5 dB is my favorite just defines at what point the meter goes red in order to get your attention. You should set up the threshold of your limiter accordingly and you will see that we have an easy time to let some peaks jump over this threshold, which is no problem as long as we don't enter the positive ramps of the peak display. Just make sure to have nothing with a red plus in front of the number. And the space between this two yellowish lines we call dynamic margin. This is the space where you want to fit your music in and control the peaks and the loudness levels by 
properly adjusting compressors and limiters. Here comes the second term to be clarified. Our integrated loudness display shows LUI and no LUFSI. Let's get clear about that. It's quite simple to grasp on this particular meter because it is the only meter with two adjacent scales. The absolute scale on the outside in white, you know that from thousands of other meters, and the relative scale in yellow inside the meter. If you see LUI, it means that the LU stuff is displayed relative to your set target loudness, therefore relative. If it would show LUFSI, it would be set to absolute because the values refer to full scale. If I change this on the back panel, you suddenly see the absolute values. I personally prefer relative because this brings you more into the mood of loudness normalization mindset. If your integrated meter shows plus 1, you know that you are 1 LU, which equals 1 dB, too loud, and when it shows minus 1 LU, you are 1 dB too low. Let's toggle back to the relative scale to get this. Okay, we are almost all set. Two other settings I recommend to use. Despite it is not very important for the task to aim for our minus 12 LUFS target loudness, but it is nice to have. I usually go for the GR mode here in the center bar graph. You have two other options, but let's skip that for now. Finally, the most useful L mode or loudness mode for this task is short term loudness, which is set here. We want that because this gives us some useful information about the current loudness. One of the differences between short-term and integrated loudness, to say it in layman's words, short-term is your real-time what is going on right now loudness meter and integrated is your what happens throughout the whole song loudness meter. Okay, I talk too much. Let's switch off the final limiter stage and assume I'm done with my EQ and basic compression and whatever comes else tasks and I'm ready to look where I am in terms of loudness. To give you a quick general mastering tip, give your mix down always a bit air to breathe in terms of peak headroom before you start mastering. For me it's minus 6 dB peak headroom, then focus on the stuff that makes your master sound better, like frequency distribution and controlling uncontrolled events without getting x dB louder with each tool. And when you're happy with the sound and impact, take care of the limiting stage at the end and just make some final corrections on the processing chain if needed. And this is where we are now. I loop a section which is supposed to be one of the choruses and play. We see that I have quite some headroom, so I now can crank up the input of the limiter quite a bit. Let's hear and see it again. You could see me clicking into the True Peak window to reset it from time to time. I do that because I want to see if every beat hits the ceiling or if a peak just occasionally hits the ceiling. Monitor also the dynamic deviation value here. You see a positive green offset, which means we can give it some more level. Let's give it another 1.5 dB as we are still very moderate in terms of loudness. What you can see is that a dynamic deviation goes around zero and the LUI almost matches your yellow target loudness line. This is kind of ideal, but caution guys, life's not that easy. Have in mind that LUI or LU integrated is supposed to be measured throughout the whole song and not just in a loop on the loudest part of the song. The gate and macro dynamics come into play, which I have mentioned at the beginning. So basically you hit your target loudness if the LUI line matches the target loudness line, 
when running the whole song with your integrated measurement. Over the time you will gather some experience about the deviation between target loudness line on the meter and the adjacent short-term loudness bar graphs and integrated loudness and if possible we will certainly enhance the dynamic deviation algorithm in the future, but as usual in the world of metering you need to gain some knowledge and experience to be able to interpret a meter in conjunction with the music you are metering. Try to remember one general easy rule about the deviation between your current short-term loudness on the bar graphs and the overall integrated loudness of a song, which is the relevant factor for loudness normalization. The fatter or the more constant the sausage, the more equals short-term loudness your integrated loudness. And on the other side, the more macro dynamics in your mix, meaning piano intro parts and the like, the higher the deviation between the current short-term loudness of your loudest spot and the final integrated loudness. In this case you can see that we have just a bit of macrodynamics, but this is enough macrodynamics that your integrated loudness just on the short loud chorus loop shows almost 1 dB more. This means that the macrodynamics over the full song let the real and valid integrated loudness fall by almost 1 dB. In other words, if you want to hit a specific target loudness, you need to be aware about the amount of macrodynamics which let your integrated loudness fall. For a song with a lot of macrodynamics, the short term loudness here on the bar graphs or the integrated loudness measured just on the loudest loop can be quite a bit higher than your set target loudness. With a very macrodynamic song, your short term loudness can deviate up to a plus minus 6 dB from your set target loudness. When you work a while with the Dynamic Range Meter Mark II, you have a great chance to get a very good feel how to deal with this. When all this is new for you, just measure a full song, watch the integrated loudness and compare it with the short term loudness. Max short term down here will show you how far short term loudness exceeds the integrated loudness at the highest spots and gives you a good idea and orientation so that you meet your target loudness with ease. One final word. When you master more than one song for the sake of an EP or album release and the songs have very different macrodynamics, use short term loudness on the loudest part to match the songs to a loudness unity. Mastering engineers always judge loudness in context of an album or EP on the loudest parts of each song and not on integrated loudness. This is the reason why we have invented album loudness normalization, but this is another story. I hope this video was a good support for you in your daily tasks to deal with loudness normalized music distribution platforms. If you don't own a Dynamic Range Meter Mark II yet, go to www.mart.com digital and download a free trial to check around with it. See you soon and have a great day. Bye!